O come, let us adore him. Come, let us worship Christ the Lord. Let us join the Magi. <coughs> the Magi, described variously as perhaps Zoroastrian priests, Persian astrologers, or, uh, or Babylonian scholars. These magi who saw the star coming up after Jesus was born in Bethlehem, during the time of King Herod, magi from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is this one who has been born king of the Jews? We've been singing about the king of kings, lord of lords, the king of the Jews, the king of all creation, the king of our lives. Where is this one who has been born king? We have seen his star, where it rose, and we have come to worship him. We have come to adore him. We have come to praise him. We have come to glorify him. <clears throat> Let us join the Magi from the East and worship Christ the Lord. We sing songs at this time of year. O come, all ye faithful, joyful, and triumphant, come to Bethlehem. Bethlehem, that town not only where Christ was born, but that town where David was born. David, that great king who brought peace to that, to that region. The warrior king. Now, King Herod also said he wanted to worship the Lord. When King Herod heard about the star from the Magi, when he heard this, he was greatly disturbed. And it said, all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophets, what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Out of you will come a ruler. King Herod said he wanted to worship him. Herod called the Magi secretly, found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. The Magi came to worship him. King Herod claimed to wish to worship him, to adore him. This time of year calls us to adore Christ. It calls us to focus our minds on Jesus. It, focus, it calls us to remember his birth. And the songs we have sung today remind us of who that Lord is, whom we worship. <coughs> Adoration is not merely fuzzy feelings. We understand that in this baby are found both grace and truth. We find that in this baby is manifest the kingdom of God. Where God's <coughs> kingdom is, God's reign is. We are told that he shall reign forever and ever. 
We sing hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. While we come to Bethlehem where a child is found, unto this child is given the throne. The government shall be on his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. To gain a little bit of a picture of what this must have been like to the Magi, but also how Herod just might have felt a little bit threatened by this child. We can go back to some of those kingly songs in the Old Testament, such as Psalm 72. That speaks about the king who will deliver the nation from her enemies. The psalm proclaims, May he rule from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. May the desert tribes bow before him, and his enemies lick the dust. May the kings of Tarshish and of distant shores bring tribute to him. May the kings of Sheba and Seba present him gifts. May all kings bow down to him, and all nations serve him. For he will deliver the needy who cry out, the afflicted who have no one to help. He will take pity on the weak and the needy to save the needy from death. He will rescue them from oppression and violence, for precious is their blood in his sight. Long may he live. May gold from Sheba be given him. May people ever pray for him and bless him all day long. May grain abound throughout the land. On the tops of the hills may it sway. May the crops flourish like Lebanon and thrive like the grass of the field. May his name endure forever. May it continue as long as the sun. Then all nations will be blessed through him and they will call him blessed. Herod recognized that if we were, if the Magi were, if all Israel were to worship and adore Christ, then that worship and adoration would not go to him. King Herod would not be recognized as the king of kings and the lord of lords. <coughs> We are told in Matthew 2 that after the Magi had heard the king, they went on with their way, and the star they had seen when it came up ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed on coming to the house they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Now some have seen in this passage the gifts that they've brought. They brought three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and some have inferred, well, there must have been three kings. Well, we don't know how many kings there were. We don't know if exactly they were kings, or philosophers, or astrologers, or priests, or what. The Magi may have been a part of a, of a caravan, it would have been about 800 miles from Persia to Bethlehem, so it could have taken them weeks to get to Bethlehem. And 
those kinds of trips were not taken in small numbers. <coughs> Some have also seen in this passage, well, the significance of the gifts. The gold would be a, a kingly gift. The frankincense would have been a priestly gift, incense uh, that would have been burned in the temple. The myrrh would have been representative of Christ's atoning sacrifice. Myrrh was frequently used to anoint bodies. And so some saw it in the gold and the frankincense and myrrh, foreshadowing of the priestly, kingly, and atoning sacrifice that Christ would make in his life. Whatever the significance of the gifts, we know that these gifts would have been useful to Mary and Joseph, the parents of the baby, as they would soon be taking flight to Egypt to escape from King Herod, who wished to kill them, to kill the child. Having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to the country by another route, we are told. The Magi came and adored the Christ. What can we learn from this in our lives? Worship. The reformer John Calvin said the following about worship. He said, although our minds cannot conceive of God without worshiping him, it is not enough to believe simply that he is the only being <coughs> everyone ought to worship and adore, unless we are convinced that he is the source of all goodness, and that we must seek for everything in him alone. We must be convinced that not only that he created the world, not only that he sustains the world by his boundless power, not only that he governs it by wisdom, not only that he keeps it going by his goodness, that he rules the human race with justice, that he puts up with it in his love, and that he shields it with his protection, not only are we to believe all of those things about what our Lord does for us, but we are also to believe that there is not an atom of light, wisdom, or justice, power, integrity, or truth to be found anywhere but flowing from him and generating by him. We are told that every good and perfect gift comes from above. Our Lord created and sustains this world in which we live. We are told that from him, to him, and through him, and we're talking about Christ. We are talking about that one who came near to us in the child born in Bethlehem. Every good and perfect thing comes from this Lord whom we are worshiping now at Christmas. Obviously, Calvin continues, we must learn to expect everything from him and ask for it, gratefully acknowledging him as the giver of all we receive. This awareness of divine perfection is the best way to learn piety from which true religion springs. By piety, I mean the blend of reverence and love to God, which realizing his blessings inspires. Until people feel they owe, they owe everything to God, that they are protected by his fatherly care, and that he is the author of all their blessings, so that nothing should be sought apart from him, they will never submit to him voluntarily. Indeed, unless they put their complete happiness in his hands, they will never truly have their lives under his control. And that was a very extensive quote. It is, uh, he is not an inspired writer, a biblical, canonical writer. 
but in commenting uh, on the scriptures, we can test to see, can search the scriptures to see if what uh, I just quoted was true. What we can say is that in Christ, we find the Lord. In Christ, we find the King. In Christ, we find our Savior. In Christ, we find God with us. And for all of those things, we come and we worship Him and we adore Him and we offer everything that we have in His service. And so it is great for us to sing hallelujah, 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 the hallelujah chorus. It's great to sing songs. And it's also great to know that God is with us, not only on one day of a year, December 25th. I mean, after all, we, we do not know exactly when Christ was born. But we know that God is with us every day. And indeed, Today is the only time we have to worship the Lord. We do not know about tomorrow. Yesterday is past and gone. Now is the time to worship and adore the Lord. Let us worship him and adore him. Let us pray together. Our Father, we thank you for the privilege of coming together to sing and worship and honor you and offer you our gifts of our time, our resources, our very lives. Please imprint on our hearts the significance of this child born in Bethlehem. And help us to see that in you, in your son Jesus, is found every good thing. May you be honored and glorified by our lives, by our thoughts, and by our prayer. In his name we pray. Amen. 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 This child is now reigning. He has reigned. He will reign. He shall reign forever and ever. He is in our midst. As Jesus said, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. We can open our hearts, our lives to this Lord, and he will indeed be our Savior, our Lord. He will be our friend. He did not just call us servants, he called us friends. What an amazing Lord that is, beyond description. If we can <clears throat> offer any prayer for, for you, any specific needs that we can encourage you with, uh, please let us know how we can do that. Uh, if you've decided that you wish to become a Christian, if you've not been baptized into Christ, now is the day. Now is the day to do that. Whatever your need is, please make it known as we stand and sing. What?